Welcome to worship. We are glad that you are with us this weekend. It is Reformation weekend at Reformation Lutheran Church. We remember the Reformation that begun with Martin Luther uh, 503 years ago, but also we remember that the church was reforming before that and has been reforming since then. As part of the children's message this week, there is a coloring page of the Luther Seal, otherwise known as the Luther Rose, which Royce sent out with the e-blast this week. If you didn't receive that and would like to, write to info at reflutherks.org. In worship today, we are affirming the baptisms of Ian, James, Drew, and Max, and we celebrate with them. In our gospel lesson today, Jesus says, If the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. Rest a moment in that as we begin worship. who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 
God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Spirit on your faithful people. Give us steadfastness in word. Protect and comfort us in times of trial. Defend us against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first lesson is from the 31st chapter of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. 
No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from Romans chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from the works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading is from the eighth chapter of John. Jesus said to the Jews that had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been in bondage to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, everyone who commits sin is in bondage to sin. The servant does not have a place permanently in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen. In the spring of 1979, I publicly affirmed my baptism. Back then, in my small town in Minnesota, it was only known as confirmation, not affirmation of baptism. And it was always an event scheduled somewhere between Easter and Mother's Day in all of the mainline Protestant churches in that community, all the ones that practiced confirmation at least. My Catholic classmates had been confirmed at a younger age and they had the bishop with them for that and so they didn't have a consistent confirmation date, but confirmation in the spring for us was normative. And with that background, it had never crossed my mind that confirmation should be an event scheduled for Reformation weekend. As an adult, before becoming a pastor, I was a member of different congregations that had different practices. One congregation was using an individualized program which led to young people affirming their baptism, confirming their faith, as soon as they had completed the program. Another congregation had chosen Reformation Sunday 75 years earlier, and they were sticking to it no matter what. I thought the choice of Reformation Sunday had to do with Lutheran pride, and maybe it did, but this year I am thinking about it differently. In the gospel text assigned for Reformation weekend, Jesus said, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. While none of our confirmands chose this verse as their confirmation verse this year, the words are so very appropriate for this day in their lives, 
because so much of the focus of their lives right now is on being done. Done with school assignments, done with a sports season, way past done with this pandemic. But as they all know, because I say it a lot, confirmation is not about being done. It is about marking this point in life when they have enough faith and enough knowledge to affirm the promises their parents made on their behalf at their baptism. Confirmation was never meant to be a graduation from Bible study. Jesus wants us to continue reading, studying, even wrestling with God's word. And the church continues to give us opportunities for that continued study. And Jesus doesn't just tell us, continue in my word, period, as if it is law. He says, if you continue in my word, then you are truly my disciples. We don't often think of ourselves as disciples, but we are, because disciples are students, learners, followers of Jesus. In other words, we aren't disciples if we believe that we already know what we need to know so that we can cross faith right off our to-do list. The passage Max chose for this day reinforces this need and desire to continue on our faith journey from Proverbs 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. These are great words for our journey. We don't have to know all the answers. We simply need to trust the one who does. The passage James chose portrays a relationship of respect with God's law. This respect doesn't come without knowing God because we cannot love God's law unless we know God's love which shows through that law. Here's what James chose from Psalm 19. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. In our gospel lesson, Jesus continues, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Part of that truth comes in a relationship with Christ, which Drew reflected on in his passage for this day from Philippians 4. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Part of that truth comes in living the Christian life day by day and hearing the Holy Spirit lead us to large and small acts which make a difference. That's what Ian reflected in his verse from Proverbs 12. Anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. And in the original context of our gospel, that truth clearly was and is Jesus. He was not just a teacher, not just a rebel out to change the status quo. He was and is the incarnation of God in our midst. Kate emphasized the nature of Jesus as both human and divine in her confirmation verse from John 11. Jesus wept. Reformation Sunday commemorates an event which happened 503 years ago in Germany, certainly. But it's so much bigger than that. The church was reforming prior to that and continues to reform. In fact, it was the presence of Jesus himself that greatly reformed and transformed the church. And the truth is still reforming hearts and shaping destinies. The truth continues to comfort us as beloved children of God, even as it makes us uncomfortable with the parts of our lives that are turned away from God. As our gospel continues, the Jewish followers of Jesus have a moment when they seem to lean on their own understanding and flawed memories. So Jesus explains about himself, if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. 
We live in a time when freedom means different things to different people. This promise is absolute. If Jesus makes us free, and he does, we are liberated from the eternal penalty of our sin. That is good news that the Reformation brings to us. That is good news of the faith of our young people that we confirm this weekend. That is good news for the world, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen.
Let us pray. Renew and inspire the church in the freedom of the gospel, O God. Where the church is in error, reform it. Where the church speaks your truth, strengthen it. Where the church is divided, unify it. Ignite in us the working of your Holy Spirit. As the earth changes, as mountains shake and the waters roar, may we care for this planet as a holy habitation for all living things. Sustain all people and lands recovering from natural disasters. Guide areas of the world divided or traumatized by conflict, especially in our own land. Free all from slavery and human trafficking and protect those in harm's way. Release those living in bondage to debts chronic pain or addiction. Grant a healing touch to those who are ill, especially those on our prayer list, those we hold in our hearts, and those whose requests came to us this week. Judy, who is recovering from hip replacement surgery, and Harrison, who will have open heart surgery this coming week. In this family of faith, we give thanks for Kate, Ian, James, Drew, and Max, and all courageous voices that have remained firm in their commitment to the one who frees us from sin and death. Centered in your grace, unify us in the hope of the gospel. Even in death, you free us and give us a place in your house. We give thanks for our ancestors who have shown us truth and freedom, especially Martin Luther and those who work for the renewal of the church. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come to the banquet table where Christ gives himself as food and drink. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard, to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen.